Hey guys, Tyler again with AR Fuffinger Armor, and today I am back to talk about something a lot of armor manufacturers don't, don't really make public. They don't tell you, and it, it's not that a lot of them aren't trying to give you the information, it's just the nature of making armor. It is important to understand there are different types of armor from steel, ceramic composite, and polyethylene for a reason. They all have upsides and they all have downsides. So in this video, I'm gonna tell you some manufacturer perspective positions on what are the differences between these systems and what you probably don't know when you're shopping for body armor. So the first thing I'm gonna tell you is when you manufacture, we'll start with a ceramic level four armor. For reference, this is a level three polyethylene plate. This is level four ceramic, and this is level three plus, which falls right in between level three and level four in terms of what it's capable of defeating. Now, they all have different price points, different weights, different thicknesses. Um, we're not gonna get into that into this video. We're gonna get into what they are designed to stop and the design intention and the manufacturing process that goes behind it. So what I wanna say is for NIJ standards currently with 06 and soon to translate into 07 as that goes live, there is something called an edge shot. There's an edge shot criteria for performance of armor. What that means is when your armor takes a shot around the perimeter, what depth is considered an edge shot and how will your armor perform? Now, the interesting thing that you probably don't know is there is an edge shot zone that is acceptable for your armor to perform in. So for reference, all of these are 10 by 12 uh, armor systems. They are all 10 by 12 shooter's cuts or swimmer's cut in this variation. Now, most manufacturers, according to 06 standards, if they adhere to that, some do and some don't, so pay attention to who you purchase from. Uh, make sure it's a reputable company first and foremost, but they have up to a two inch allowance on an edge shot for the armor to perform. So meaning two inches from the edge on your body armor is not a ballistically rated zone or up to two inch. Some manufacturers make better products, some do not. Some meet the bare minimum, some exceed the minimum. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because if you have a 10 by 12 plate, your effective ballistic capable zone for its threat rating could be up to two inches from the perimeter, essentially rendering a 10 by 12 piece of armor an eight by 10 equivalent in terms of actual ballistic protection. Now, that is the most common in ceramic composite level four and polyethylene level three. What I do wanna note is steel armor, just like our militia helmets, and another huge benefit of running steel is you get full edge to edge protection across the entire perimeter of the plate. Now, edge shots in body armor are not good, right? If you take an edge shot on body armor, you're really pushing the limits, whether the round is contained or not, uh, whether an angle is involved is an entirely different scenario and a topic we'll cover in a future video. Um, but it is important to note your ballistically capable zone on a ceramic composite plate or a polyethylene plate is likely much reduced depending on the manufacturer if they follow the guidelines and take the maximum allowance of a two inch edge shot placement for a ballistic capable zone. Whereas all of our steel armor is edge to edge protection and ballistically capable. You can hit a round on the edge and on a perfectly clean flat perpendicular plane, it will defeat the round on the edge ceramic and polyethylene armor may not, and that's due to design. So when you're shopping for armor and you're looking at ultra budget level fours or polyethylenes and you're trying to save a buck, understand you're probably sacrificing edge performance. Now what a lot of companies will do is they'll have a, what looks like a 10 by 12 plate, but it'll be slightly undersized in terms of the ceramic strike face and the backer, and it'll have some sort of foam around the perimeter. They'll, they can get away with that because it is still a 10 by 12 plate on its surface and it's covered up but they are playing within the guidelines of what certification they're going for. And I'm not calling anybody out, um, all ceramic and polyethylene, it's the nature of using those materials in the product. Now, when you talk a steel plate, we have a monolithic system that is formed and cured and treated into a ballistically capable piece, all inclusive edge to edge. When you're talking polyethylene, for example, what you're doing is adhering multiple layers of polyethylene, putting it in a press, combining the materials, and you have layers and layers. Now, it doesn't create a monolithic panel. So when you have layers and layers and it takes around, what happens is layers will delaminate. Not only does that cause increased back face deformation, it also prevents edge shot performance because of the delamination. The delamination is part of how it stops the round and part of how it mitigates the energy, but it has a seriously detrimental effect on the edge because there isn't room for the laminate. What happens is the edge material will roll in and it requires a certain amount of material to delaminate and roll in to catch the round. The same goes with ceramic. So ceramic 
in composite armor, which makes level four, is generally consists of a ceramic strike face and a polyethylene or fiberglass backer. The backer has the same consequences as a purely polyethylene plate to where on an edge shot, it requires it to roll up. Ceramic is closer to steel in terms of its chemical makeup, but it is very hard and brittle. That's why ceramic is always an in conjunction system. So when you talk ceramic armor, it's not just ceramic. It is always a ceramic composite or ceramic and fiberglass build, generally speaking. So on impact, the round penetrates through the ceramic and is intended to stop in the composite backer, again, being PE or fiberglass. On steel, we don't have those delamination issues. We don't have the edge shot criteria to take into account because it is a monolithic design. And for all of our steel threat levels, we use a proprietary formula to achieve the threat level we do. Not all steel is created equal and there are significant performance differences in types of steel and armor. Not all steels target steel, mild, there's a tons of different steel and it's easy to generalize the category being a monolithic panel, whereas polyethylene and ceramics are usually a multi-component system or a bunch of layers that are pressed together to try to mimic monolithic designs, but they aren't. They are layer designs with adhesive and pressing techniques. So on the edge shot topic, the two inch from the edge perimeter is applicable to body armor with a single threat level rating or a single threat. I do wanna note there is an allowance in the standard for up to a three inch shot placement from the perimeter, which would reduce the ballistic area even more on armor that is capable of defeating multiple threats. I encourage you to do your research and pay attention to where you purchase from and see if the manufacturer is putting that information out there for you on its performance. Regardless of if you purchase through us or not, we want you to make an educated decision on buying body armor to get the best body armor that will perform for what you need. A lot of guys gravitate towards level four being the best. I would disagree. Level four is fantastic, but it might not be the best for you. My argument there is 30-06 M2AP, if you're using it for home defense, isn't really a common threat. Do you really need to pay the money and take the sacrifices ceramic has to defeat 30 6 m2 ap such as you lose the multi-hit capability you have a much thicker plate so again not knocking level four fantastic armor but higher isn't always better really identifying why you want to own body armor should be the criteria for the threat level and type of armor you choose so the next thing i want to talk about are single hit rated plates and multi-hit rated plates generally speaking when you're talking level three and three plus, it is rated to six shots of its maximum performing round. That may change between types of armor. As you guys know, our steel armor is the most multi-hit capable armor on the market. And you've seen YouTube videos of, uh, for example, our level three plate defeating up to 90 rounds or so. Uh, Demolition for Ranch has a video, highly recommend you go check it out, of M855 penetrators on our standard level three plate. That blows anything out of the water. Most armor is not that multi-hit capable, nor is it realistic to need to stop that many rounds. So generally speaking, it is rated within a standard and that standard is usually six rounds. When you're talking level four on a 30-06 M2 AP armor piercing round, it is generally rated to one round. Now, why am I talking about multi-hit capabilities and single hit capabilities? There is a shot placement criteria for performance on multi-hit rated body armor. Generally speaking, on a polyethylene and ceramic system, when you shoot it once and it is a multi-hit rated panel within its threat rating, the armor can perform up to a maximum allowance of two inches between shot placement to be considered an effective and ballistically rated zone within shot placement. So if you shoot one up top and one a half inch below on most armor manufacturers, that is well below what they build the armor for. They generally build it with two inch shot placement in mind. Now we do the same and that's what we test to on our steel, but it is far more capable. And the reason when you can tell the difference is when you're looking at armor manufacturers and when they show you a test video, pay attention to their shot placement. If they have a really big panel and they're spacing them six, seven, eight inches apart, there might be a reason for that. If they are stacking the rounds, they probably won't do that because it will penetrate the material. If you look at some of our test videos, you know, we space reasonably and a lot of that has to do with the fragmentation coating. But the reality is we have plenty of test videos with shot placement in a very tight group. The unique thing about a monolithic panel and steel is when you take around here, the only thing that becomes compromised, the steel does become work hardened, it does compromise and you will eventually blow through if you keep stacking rounds. So back face deformation, you wanna pay attention to how that works and 
uh, what the armor is capable of doing. Steel is the best at mitigating back base deformation. Being a monolithic design, it deforms much less than ceramic composite or polyethylene. Now, I am pro steel, obviously. A lot of guys aren't, and there are other benefits to running systems, but I'm just kind of giving you the facts from a manufacturer's perspective on things that a lot of guys won't tell you. Last thing I want to touch on that is probably not common knowledge are threat levels and types of rounds. There are some exceptions, and generally speaking, steel gives way to most of those exceptions because it is good performing all around being a monolithic design. Now, I'm gonna use level three, and I'm gonna talk about green tip 5.56 M855 penetrators for a second. Now, there is a mild penetrator in an M855. It is not an armor-piercing round, but it is a barrier penetrating round. It's a 62 grain 5.56 green tip with a core that is designed to penetrate light barriers and brush, such as car doors and other things, uh, brush and shrubbery. Now, polyethylene level three armor, generally speaking, unless it is an in-conjunction design with a ceramic strike face, which would normally make it level three plus a special threat tested rating for M855, level three as it is will not defeat M855 green tip despite it being level three. That doesn't seem to be called common knowledge. And the reason is, while polyethylene is a good armor system and it is ultra lightweight, the trade-off and the caveat there is it's an ultra thick panel. And that's, that's uh, part of the reason it is so light is that it's just polyethylene layers built up, but it is not capable of defeating rounds with penetrators, even mild penetrators. That includes some 7.62 by 39 surplus rounds that if you hold a magnet to it, it has a hardened steel core or even a mildly hardened steel core that'll blow right through polyethylene armor. It is not designed to stop it unless it is special threat tested to do so. With steel, that is different. Our level three steel body armor will defeat velocity up to 2780 feet per second, up to 308. In addition, it will defeat rounds with mild steel core penetrators, not armor piercing rounds, but rounds with barrier penetrators. So that's an important distinction when choosing uh, level three polyethylene and level three steel. One will not defeat penetrators, but you get the benefit of having an ultralight platform at the cost of it being thicker and much more expensive, where steel is gonna be heavier than polyethylene, but it will give you more multi-hit capability, edge-to-edge -edge -edge performance of the plate, and much improved multi-hit capabilities in terms of shot placement and what the panel can actually take. With level four, that's not necessarily an issue because its threat level is so high and it is an in-conjunction system with a true hard strike face and a composite backer. So this will generally stop anything with a penetrator, but it is also to stop a single round of 30-06 M2AP, which is an armor piercing round. So we hope that helps you guys make an educated decision on buying body armor, whether it's through us or not, but we wanted you to understand the differences. If you guys have questions or concerns, please let us know. We wanna make sure you get body armor that works for you. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. As you guys know, social media is not in the favor of pro 2 a companies. We generally get algorithmed out. So if you wanna stay up to date, make sure you get on our mailing list for new product launches, promos, and things we have going on, in addition to liking, sharing, and following us on social media. Thank you guys again.